Hi there, and welcome to my video. Today we are going to experimentally find out the value of Planck's constant. So Planck's constant is a physical constant which is denoted by the term h and has a value of 6.626176 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and was first introduced by Max Planck in the year 1900. And after this constant, the study of quantum mechanics was started. So it's a very important constant and we're going to calculate this value today. And if you want to know more about the theory behind the Planck's constant, then you can check the links in the description. So to calculate the value of the constant, first we need to calculate two things, which are activation energy and wavelength of four LEDs. So here I have four LEDs of different color, yellow, green, red and blue. So we are going to calculate the activation energy of these four LEDs and then also the wavelengths of the light emitted by these four LEDs. So, so for calculating the activation energy of the LEDs, I am going to use this multimeter and calculate the voltage calculate the voltage across the across the LEDs and it will be the minimum voltage where the LED will just start to glow and that will be our activation voltage and if I if I multiply the activation voltage with the charge of the electron then I can get the activation energy so this is how we're going to calculate the activation energy and for the wavelength of the light I'm going to use this diffraction grating here. Diffraction grating is just a piece of plastic with a large number of slits in between and here you can see on the diagram this, if this is my diffraction grating and these are my large number of slits and if I shine a light on this diffraction grating on the screen I'll get a bright spot and since the light will get diffracted, I'll get a pair of bright spots on both sides of this point P at some distance and another pair of bright spots at some other distance from point P on both sides. If you want to know more about the theory behind the diffraction rating, you can check the links given in the description. So with the help of this laser, you can see the effect of the diffraction rating. That's our central bright spot and those two are the first two diffractions of the diffraction rating and those two are the second diffractions and it will go even further if the screen is large enough so now let's measure the activation voltage of our leds so to do that i have created a circuit on the breadboard using a variable resistor and a led and my multimeter so the circuit diagram is this the 3 volt battery is directly connected to the led in series with the 100k variable resistor and the meter probes are connected parallel to the led so that we can check the voltage across the led and if i change the variable resistor then the voltage across the um, LED changes and we want the minimum voltage of the LED when the LED just starts to glow and that will be our activation voltage. So now let's turn on my power supply and you can see the LED is glowing and the voltage across the LED is 2.79 volts but that's not what we want. Let's increase the resistance. My resistance. And the LED doesn't glow anymore because I had increased the resistance and the voltage across the LED is 1.76. So now let's slowly decrease the resistance. And at around at around 1.8485 volts, the LED barely glows. So it means this is the activation voltage of the LED. You can't see through the camera, but the LED just barely glows in that voltage. So this is the activation voltage of the green LED. So now, similarly, I can calculate, I, I mean, I, I can measure the activation voltages of the rest of the LEDs. So let's do that. So here's, I've finished measuring the activation voltage of the LEDs. And as you can see, for the green LED, it's 1.90. For blue, it's 2.25 volts. For red LED, it's 1.45 volt. And for yellow LED, it's 1.64 volts. So this is our activation voltage table. This is the setup I am going to use to calculate the wavelengths of the LED lights. And first, if I shine this 650 nanometers laser on this diffraction grating, 
you can see I have got a central spot here and two bright spot on both sides. These two are the first two diffractions of the diffraction grading. But if I shine a 405 nanometers laser, which is a blue laser, then you can see I have a central bright, and the, these are these two are the first two diffractions, and I can I can even see the second two diffractions here. But here the distance from the central bright and the first two diffractions are much smaller than that of the red laser as you can see here I can't even see the second two diffractions because it's out of the screen and this can be explained using the diffraction formula and the diffraction formula is d sine theta equals n lambda where lambda stands for the wavelength of the light we used n stands for the integer number of diffraction in our case we will be using the first diffraction point so n will be equal to 1 theta here is the angle between the central bright and the first diffraction point so this, this is our diffraction grating and this is the screen so if this is the first diffraction point this angle over here will be our theta and if we calculate this distance say this is y and the distance between the screen and the diffraction grating is x so we can calculate the value of theta as theta equals 10 inverse of y by x. So we can calculate the value of sine theta from here. This will be sine theta equals sine of 10 inverse y by x. So with the help of this, I can calculate the value of lambda as d sine of 10 inverse y by x divided by n. So n is 1, so d sine 10 inverse of, so this will give me the value of lambda. And as you can see from the formula, the angle at which the light will bend depends upon the freq uh, I mean wavelength of the light. So that's why red light bends more than the blue light as it has longer wavelength than blue light. So if I want to calculate the wavelengths of the LED lights, I need to shine this LED on this diffraction gratings to get a diffraction pattern over there. So if I shine this, you can see I'm getting no diffraction patterns on the screen. And that's because the lights coming out from the LED are not well focused like the laser. So in order to focus the light, we need to make a makeshift version of a collimator. And there it is, uh, it's just a cardboard box with a tiny slit over here and it will act as a makeshift version of a collimator. When I'll put my LED inside this box then we will get a light in the shape of this slit and we can project it on the diffraction reading to get some diffraction patterns. So let's put it in. So there it is, I have kept my LED inside this box and you can see the image of the slit and the diffraction reading and another image on the screen and it is the central bright coming from the diffraction grating and these two are the first two diffractions I don't think you can see that let me turn on the light so now you can see the two diffraction points I want to measure the distance from the central bright and the first diffraction points so if I measure the distance from the central bright to the first diffraction point it is around 6.3 centimeters and the distance from the screen and the slit uh, I'm sorry grating is 26.1 cm so the distance from the slit I mean from the grating and the screen is 26.1 centimeters and the distance between the central bright and the first diffraction point is 6.3 centimeters so the angle theta will be 10 inverse of 6.3 divided by 26.1 so therefore from here I can calculate the value of lambda to be <clears throat> d sine theta where our grating is uh, 500 lines per millimeter so d will be 1 upon 500 times sine of 10 inverse of 6.3 divided by 26.1 so from here I get approximate value of 0 0.0047160926 millimeters as the wavelength of the blue light 
so if I convert it into nanometers then the wavelength of blue light is equals to 471.609 nanometers so similarly I can calculate the wavelength of green red and yellow light so let's calculate them So here I have finished calculating the wavelengths of the rest of the LEDs. So for the green it's 525.034 nanometers, for red it's 636.037 and for yellow it's 562.021 and here are the respective activation voltages. For blue it's 2.20 volts, for green it's 1.90 volts, for red it's 1.54 volts and for yellow it's 1.85 volts. And we know the equation for the energy of a photon is given by h nu plus psi where nu is the frequency of the light and psi is the work function so as we know we can write the energy as the activation voltage times the charge of the electron and we can write nu the frequency as c which is the speed of light divided by lambda the wavelength of the light so the equation becomes E V naught equals H C over lambda plus psi which implies V naught equals if I divide both sides by E then H C over E lambda plus psi over E so if I equate this H C over E times 1 by lambda plus psi over so using this equation and the readings of V0 and lambda from the table we can plot a graph of V0 and 1 over lambda and the slope of that graph slope let's say s equals will be the value this hc over e and we can calculate h equals slope times e divided by c so from here I can calculate the value of h that is the Planck's constant and the slope uh, will be calculated from the graph. So let's plot the points on the graph and there on the x side these are the values of 1 over lambda and on the y side these are the values of the activation voltages and the points are plotted on the graph here and on Desmos I have done a least square regression line where, and the slope of the line is around 0 0.00011637 and I know the charge of the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power 8 so the value of h will be slope times the charge of the electron divided by the speed of light which gives me the value of h around 6.20658225795 times 10 to the power minus 34 which is pretty close to the actual value of the Planck's constant so if I calculate the percentage error the error is about 6.33 percent uh, which is fair enough for an experiment done with plane rulers so that's one way to calculate the value of Planck's constant and our measured value is fairly close enough to the actual value of Planck's constant and if we can use a precise instrument for measuring the distances then we can fairly reduce this error thank you so much for watching the video guys if you enjoyed it then do hit the like button and share the video with your friends and if you want to support my work consider subscribing the channel and don't forget to leave a comment again thank you very much stay safe and see you next time